anyway. So this, um, this business here, if we're looking at this from a mod as a model farm, um, it harvests all of the water and then actually um, has a continuous flow of water out of the system because it's changed the whole hydrology of this site such that instead of the water just going through and flashing away, it's, um, it's now increased the amount of available water in soil so that there's always water moving through the system. It's like when one builds a swale, you know, it's, you can either, the water, as Warren Brush said of his swales out at Quail Springs Permaculture at Kiama, he said that, you know, when I built a swale, or before I built a swale, the water would come from the hill to the creek in about 10 seconds, right, or a day or whatever. Now it takes two years. Because what we're doing here is we're rehydrating the system. And it's akin basically to what happens when a landscape is forested. Not only like you were actually intercepting the runoff, uh, intercepting the rain before it hits the ground and then we're getting it infiltrating into the groundwater and then creeks and rivers are actually being fed through the groundwater, not through overland runoff. That's actually how it's meant to be, folks. And um, this sort of system here mimics that. Um, to a degree, but does it in an engineering framework that we can also overcome any drought. There is no drought on this farm, even though the rainfall here is only 25 inches and totally erratic. Here in west of Sydney there is no pattern to, to rain it's, um, at any time of the year. Um, so it's a sort of a, an environment where you really need to have this sort of thing. And that's, it's, this is a system that's born out of necessity. Now wouldn't you think that um, in California here where you have drought every year that it would be, um, if, you didn't, if, you know, if you guys didn't have the groundwater resources that you have, you would be doing this kind of stuff. And it won't be long before you won't have the groundwater resources that you have. Um, that's that's um, certainly going to be the case. The, the time of replenishment um, is much slower than the um, rate of use. So don't be under any illusions there. Um, and, but the good thing is that you've got, I've shown you this and now you don't have any excuse. <laughs> um, so it's just a matter of our policy people who come to these shows occasionally. I just did a show up in um, in Marin County and we had NRCS people there and uh, Natural Resource Conservation Service people there and uh, Farm Bureau people there etc and they were all they were pretty happy with what they saw but then you've got state water laws and all of that sort of thing to get past. Um, anyway we'll, we'll just keep badgering away. You've got to vote for a guy called Brock Dolman to be on the um, water board on the water authority up in California and he'll He'll get in there and stir things up. Yeah. So um, now Yeoman's in, in, integrated trees into these landscapes in uh, clever ways, um, which is quite good, um, which is a form of um, what we call energy capture. And um, you can see here again that um, we're using these systems so that we're holding the amount of energy through the system instead of having it all run off. Now, we use this uh, key point locations. Key points are um, positions in gullies where the landscape changes from convex to concave. Um, and that's the highest practical place in a valley that we can store water. Um, and it's pretty high up in valleys. You'll see some here. There's, you've, got, you've all seen landscapes like that. I haven't got one of those fancy laser pointers, but I'll just point to it by the key point in this valley is right here. Now you, you've got key points all through this town. Um, a lot of you, I've actually, my house in my town is actually built on a key point, but they've just got um, drainage so that I don't get inundated. Um, but um, they are points all through landscapes. This is at Cambria, and um, this is a, um, a vineyard that's, that's um, dehydrating a hill. Um, and the crazy thing is, is they're pumping water from underground and then pumping it at high energy cost through this whole system when in fact they could have uh, built a storage at the top of this hill and another one in here and they could have all been run by gravity. 
using today's water, not 10,000 years ago's water. Yeah, not fossil water as I call it. Yeah, today's water. Actually, using water that's um, fresher in the hydrological cycle. But instead, they're drying the landscape out and creating an erosion.